Hello and welcome to this episode of the Skiff Meetings Podcast, the podcast for curious professionals embracing the future of business events. My name is Miguel Nevsh and I'm the editor-in-chief of Skiff Meetings. And this episode is all about the circular economy and how destinations benefit from circularity. Joining me are two experts in their own right. From the destination side, we have Brecht Putman, Senior Association Manager North America at Visit Flanders, the Convention Bureau for Flanders, the northern Dutch-speaking part of Belgium, and one of the leading experts on the circular economy, Carl Vranken, Research Manager, Circular Economy at VITO. And VITO stands for Vision on Technology for a Better World, an independent Flemish research organization in the area of clean tech and sustainable development. In our conversation, we cover things like what is the circular economy, why Flanders as a destination looking to attract business events is focused on the circular economy. We talk about some of the key events taking place in Flanders on and around the circular economy that also set great examples for other events. We talk about how these kinds of events create a valuable legacy at a destination and just where can you start learning about circularity and circular economy processes. I hope you enjoy listening to this conversation and I invite you to check out the other episodes of the podcast. You can find them on our website or by subscribing through your favorite podcast service. And now for a word from our sponsors, PHL Life Sciences, a division of the Philadelphia Convention and Visitors Bureau. Host your convention or trade show in Philadelphia, one of America's leading life sciences hubs. PHL Life Sciences, the first and only CVB division of its kind, will connect you to the professionals at the forefront of your industry and to a culture you can only find in Philadelphia. A city known for its rich history that's forging a bright future, Philadelphia challenges the expected and defies convention. A world of discovery is waiting. Visit phllife.com to learn more. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Skift Meetings podcast. Delighted that you can join us today. Today, we have a special episode that is dedicated to our current sponsors for the month of April 2023, Visit Flanders. And it's all about the circular economy. I hope you enjoy our conversation. I'm sure I am going to enjoy it. With me today, I have Brecht Putman, Senior Association Manager North America at Visit Flanders, and Carl Rankin, Research Manager, Circular Economy at Vito. Thank you both for joining me today. It's a pleasure to have you on the podcast. So Brecht, um, we've known each other for a while, I think something like 10 years or more, uh, I think mainly through MPI and other um, industry connections. Um, but would love to kind of get a little introduction from you about um, you know, your story. How did you connect with this uh, events industry? And um, how did you get to be you really? Yeah. Um, so I started working for the Visit Flanders Convention Bureau about 15 years ago uh, in Brussels, where our headquarters is located. I'm personally from Belgium originally. Um, and after three years, um, we decided to expand our operations into the U.S. market, which is a very important market uh, when it comes to meetings and tourism um, to Flanders. So I started working in the U.S. office in New York about 12 years ago. And my job is to attract uh, international conferences uh, to Flanders. Let's get this. Let's get this out of the way. Flanders. Could you just make sure everybody understands where Flanders is and and what sure. it is really? Yeah. So Flanders is the northern Dutch-speaking region of Belgium. Um, it's quite a small region. It's about the size of Connecticut for those are who are listening in the United States. Um, in about two hours, you go from east to west and north to south. Um, the main cities are Brussels, Antwerp, Bruges, Ghent, Leuven. Um, I think that's what most people can relate to. Um, Flanders is located in the heart of Europe and honestly, uh, super close to other European capitals. Um, in about two hours, you get to London uh, by high speed train. Less than one hour and a half, you get to Paris. Amsterdam, Cologne, so truly a, um, I would say a thriving region in the heart of Europe, known for um, cultural heritage, beer, chocolate, um, and many other things. Sounds good. And just for people that don't have uh, this kind of notion, I think going between Belgium and Netherlands uh, is very easy, right? There, there are no borders, there's, there's signs and things like that, but you could easily go from one to the other without even noticing it. And I think a lot of people do that kind of multiple times a day, right? 
Correct, correct. And this is really uh, the European project um, that I'm personally very proponent of, but people can travel freely uh, within the member states of the United um, of the uh, European Union. So, so it's really an advantage um, for post trips, um, combining destinations. Um, it's a good thing. Yeah. So to having a, an event in Flanders, you could easily pop over to the Netherlands, even Germany, France, many other destinations can be kind of part of that. So I would say very true. Destination. But after the destination, we of course uh, we recommend staying. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. So, Carl, over to you. Would love to understand a little bit of of how you fit all, in all of this and your connection to Flanders as well. Yeah. So, my name is Carl Franken. I'm a research manager uh, for Circuit Economy with Vito. Vito is the Flemish Institute for Technological Research. So, we're a government-owned research institute. Uh, which works on uh, sustainability and, and technologies for sustainability. Um, I've, uh, I've been working here for more than 25 years, uh, always been working in sectors of uh, waste management, uh, reuse, uh, recycling, the type of topics. And I'm also a, an associate professor at the University of Antwerp, where I teach circular economy. Thank you for, for being with us. You are the subject matter expert here for sure. Um, how did you get into the circular economy? Could you tell us a little bit how, you know, where did this come about? Yeah, I, um, I started my career in, in waste management and, and waste management technology. Um, and so whereas that in, in that time, we mainly looked at the end of pipe solutions, we sort of naturally uh, moved into looking more forward in, into the material cycle, thinking about recycling first, uh, collection, recycling, the whole storyline there. Mm. Could you uh, just but, explain but, end of pipe solutions? What does that mean? Like the end of life? Yeah, end of life. Uh, but yeah, when you talk about industrial processes, you have emissions and things just flow out of the out of the pipe, and then you think about how oh, how are we going to clean this water? Uh, that that sort of issues. But um, so yeah, we more and more have uh, taken attention for what's happening at the front of the value chain, eh? thinking about how can we prolong the lifetime of products, how can we. Uh, make sure that uh, products are used by multiple persons uh, so that they are more effectively used. Once we um, bring up the value of something, how can we make sure that this value is um, uh, is used for a longer time? So, and that brings us to circular economy, where we think about leasing of products, the sharing of products, the reuse of products, uh, all that type of activities. Okay, I was going to ask you exactly to define circular economy. I'm pretty familiar. I think a lot of event professionals are familiar with uh, sustainability, but circular economy, is it just being ultra sustainable? What, what does it really mean? Well, I think, well, circular economy basically is a strategy to reach sustainability. Circular economy is not a goal in itself. It's a, a different way of looking at at materials, it's a sustainable way of managing materials. So it means that you try to maintain the value of a product for as long as possible. Uh, you've put a lot of effort in uh, making a product out of a material. So why would you break it down to the material again? Uh, that's basically the idea. So we try to make sure that products are reused, that they are repaired, that they are refurbished. Uh, and if that's not possible, and then you think about how to manage them in a recycling chain. Uh, and ultimately, of course, now you should also think about how to manage waste fractions and make sure that you extract all the value that's left in there. Yeah, fascinating. And I, and I think a lot of um, event professionals, you know, see recycling as a really good thing, really valuable thing. And of course it is, but there's lots of things that should, from what I'm hearing, come before it, right? That you should consider before recycling, recycling almost as a last alternative. Yes, because circular economy leads to new business insights, to new types of business models where you don't just sell a product into a market and you don't know your customer, but uh, you go into models where you uh, you, know, you remain the owner uh, maybe of your product or you make sure that you know where the product goes and you manage it while it is in use. And we also look more at uh, the use of a product rather than the consumption uh, where, where it ends up as uh, being uh, outdated, worn out, uh, or at the end of its lifetime. So it's a totally different approach uh, of interacting with your customer and with the market. Fascinating. Um, and I'm sure we'll get into it more. But so tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, your connection to events and, and meetings and, and 
you know, in your mind, the role that, that meeting professionals can actually play um, in the circular economy? Because it's a different way of looking at products and of looking at uh, how your business works. Typically, in circular economy, you need a lot of uh, contacts with uh, with your customers, but also with your suppliers, and even uh, the next step in your value chain. So typically, if you talk to a company, they know who they buy from and maybe who they sell to or where they sell something. But in circular economy, you really need to know your value chain. And that means that circular economy typically is something where a lot of contact is necessary. So you need to talk to people. You need to sit together to uh, to evaluate, to look at your value chain, to analyze the, the business model that you supply to the market. Uh, and so there's a lot of knowledge involved uh, to know uh, how that market functions. On the other hand, uh, it also generates a lot of needs for technology. How do you track your material? Uh, where does the material go? Where does it come from? So uh, there's a lot of knowledge there involved. And we need to bring together a lot of different disciplines in circular economy, because um, yeah, also if you think that your business model changes, you probably need a different way of insuring uh, the, the products that you're putting on the market. You need a different way of financing your business model. So we typically need to speak to a lot of people with different backgrounds. And so conferences are a very nice place to bring those people together. Interesting. So you see conferences as a as a really good place to 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 create those impacts or to start those relationships and to make those connections. Uh, I guess from a strictly kind of networking perspective, but also from a I guess a, a knowledge perspective, right? Knowing about new different ways of doing things, tools, etc. Yeah, indeed. Because yeah, we need to exchange our visions on where we want to go to. Yeah, if you want to move to a sustainable consumption and production system, it's good to talk about it. Where, where does it have to lead to? Uh, how do we see this? What are the different options, but also what are the opportunities, what are the threats if we think about such a different system? So that needs a lot of exchange of ideas. Yeah, I think for, for every uh, meeting professional, it's always nice to hear those words because uh, it's there's a lot of questions around the value of meetings. But when you hear that academics and practitioners like yourself, you know, really see value in coming together, I think that's that's really inspiring. So as a convention bureau, um, we kind of want to step away from the temporary events with just measuring the impact uh, that's economic and just the temporary nature of a conference in a destination. Um, the reason why we um, focus so much on the sector called circular, circularity or circular economy um, is because we believe we can create a longer lasting impact. When we bring a temporary, so to speak, uh, event to the destination, um, it'll, it will be temporary in terms of, yes, three days conference, but we also believe we can create a longer term impact by connecting um, international experts coming to the conference with our local experts, such as we have here on the panel today. Um, we believe we can create projects and a really um, yeah longer term impact. So as a government um, destination marketing organization, we are actually striving to step away from just the temporary nature of events. That's really interesting. Thank you for jumping in. I think that that's a, a really interesting approach and, and kind of fascinating. But tell me a little bit more about why Flanders is is so involved in this. You know, a circular economy, fascinating, obviously, sustainability, etc. Always a great topic. And as an industry, I think it's very important for us to figure out how to be more sustainable and how a circular economy seems to be a great way to think about it. Um, but why is Flanders so involved in this and, and creating these different opportunities and kind of promoting this aspect? Yeah. So first of all, circularity, um, no sector as this one has so much impact on our future, uh, like the circular economy. We have to think about sustainable ways to live our life and in order to preserve the planet. This all sounds a little bit fluffy, but we have to admit that in Flanders, um, the northern region of Belgium, we are a global forerunner when it comes to research and development within the sector. And we want to attract um, international conferences that relate to that exactly because of the impact and legacy reasons uh, that are connected to that. We are a rich source of inspiration and insights to other international conferences related to this field. Um, but with this, though, I have to circle back or dial back a little bit. So circularity is just one of 11 key sectors that we focus on. And this has everything to do with our strategy. Um, as a destination marketing organization, we chose to um, no longer measure our success 
um, solely economically, but also socially. We want to attract only um, not more conferences, but better conferences. We want to attract conferences that relate to our destination. We want to attract conferences that share the DNA of our destination. So we will measure our success, um, not only in economic terms, but also in terms of, um, well, what meaningful exchange was able to take place. So circular economy is one of 10 domains. Uh, some others, just for explanation, are healthcare, when you look at Leuven, Ghent, Antwerp University, we see those in those universities. We are, again, global frontrunners when it comes to research within certain oncology research, nanotechnology. I'm not going to get into it too much, but just to explain, um, we really radically choose to only focus on association conferences that relate to our destination. This was a choice we, we made as a destination marketing organization. Makes total sense, but I, I assume that you're happy to, to talk to people organizing events in, in, in many different fields, right? Can you help uh, destinations or, sorry, can you help event organizers that want to embrace circularity in the circular economy, either as part of the content or as how they do their, their events? A hundred percent. So I must also say, Miguel, everybody is welcome to Flanders. Um, I'm just saying we, as the experts in the convention bureau, we can best help those associations that are linked to our key industries. Um, so clarity, yes, we are happy to help any organization that's related to this field. Again, by putting together, if necessary, depending on how the association is set up uh, by finding a local organizing committee, connecting them with local universities or experts or other local associations related to this field. Um, and then secondly, of course, um, our other tasks is, you know, the research for venues, uh, accessibility, all those things. Are you ready to celebrate your successes in the world of meetings and events? The Skift Meetings Awards are back for 2024, recognizing the most innovative business events companies across 15 categories, and we want you to be a part of it. Winners will feature on Skift Meetings, sending a clear signal to events professionals around the world that these are partners they can rely on. The final deadline for submissions is June 11th. We encourage you to start your submission today to secure the best entry rates. For more information and to start your submission, head to live.skift.com. Excellent. So I want to come back to you, Carl, again. Um, I know that you've been involved in quite a few, you know, quite high profile events, but I wanted you to help us connect the dots between the research side of what you do and then the attracting events to Flanders. How do, how do those dots connect and what role have you played? Um, well, I think it's important when, uh, when you set up conferences that you have a generic storyline, a long lasting uh, storyline. I also want to come back a little bit to this uh, temporary items. So typically the conferences we do, they have a, a repeating nature and they have as a, as a basis to build a community. Um, one of, of the examples there is the global uh, sustainable technology and innovation community, GSTIC, um, which has been, uh, organizing recurring conferences over the past years and attracting high level speakers, uh, such as uh, Antonio Gutierrez, who recently came to the conference. And another example there is uh, the Love Tomorrow conference, which is linked. And that's very interesting, I think, to the very known festival Tomorrowland. So there's a yearly festival uh, of uh, typically of dance music, and it has a very big infrastructure, which is there for two weekends, and it attracts people really from around the globe. It's uh, sold out always very quickly, this festival. And so in the week between the, the two festival weekends, we use the infrastructure to set up a, a sustainability festival to also yeah, talk to those people that come to the festival but attract uh, additional uh, other participants. And so it's this idea, yeah, build a storyline around your conference, either uh, through building this community or to uh, setting it up linked with another important event where you can show that you have a backbone, that you have a background, that you have a story to tell. I think that's a very important uh, item here, a very important issue. And then uh, in the organization, you, you try to make sure that you network, that, that you build a network with other organizations. We're very strong at that uh, also here in Flanders. We're very much linked to the European level, certainly when it comes to circular economy. Um, we have a very close connection to the European Environment Agency, which is uh, the agency that 
uh, brings together all information about the environment, but also drives the environment policy, the materials policy in Europe. Um, so by having this very tight connection as an organization, we also can make sure that we attract interested people and that if conferences come to our place, that we can very easily connect them to the European level. Fascinating. So I really like the example you gave of, of Love Tomorrow, right? The, the conference or the event that happens in between Tomorrowland, right? There's uh, there's yeah, two indeed. weekends with, with music festivals, with thousands of, of festival goers, but the same site is then used during the week for a, is it one conference? Is it multiple conferences? Is it sort of its own circularity festival? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, it's uh, well. So uh, it started as a as a one day event, uh, but indeed it's uh, it's growing to to multiple days and and multiple stages, <laughs> as typically festivals do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, indeed for the new edition, we'll be uh, we'll be using several stages and uh, and doing a more day event there. And so, what do you where do you want to go with these events? Because you're attracting some big names, Antonio Guterres. You also have Yuval Noah Harari coming to Love Tomorrow. I mean, these are pretty big names. This is this is a, a big event in its own right uh, now, or, or both of these are. W where do you mm -hmm. see this going? Are these going to be the the leading events? I, I'm assuming they are the leading events in terms of circular economy. But where do you imagine this going in the future? Um, well, I I think we want to um, to talk to a very wide audience here yeah, to also yeah, be sort of a influencer or influencer type events yeah, and not on social media but through really live events where we where we bring uh, future thinkers yeah, together with a with a wide audience i think that's important but we also link it then yeah, to bringing the content and to bringing also scientifically based uh, material to this uh, broad audience. I think that's one of the specificities that we do in, in, in those conferences is uh, to couple, let's say, a worldwide dialogue with, um, with scientific information and with debate. And I think yeah, we need to open the debate to all the different generations yeah, to talk to a lot of people. And uh, by linking, for example, like yeah, to this Tomorrowland event, we're able to extend our reach, reach out also to young people much more than we do typically with other conferences. Yeah, fascinating. So Brecht, I wanted to come back to you and, and kind of the, the strategy of, of Visit Flanders. And could, maybe you could kind of paint a picture for us. Um, I'm thinking on one side, you have uh, events that are sustainable, that are talking about circularity that are really in that remit and i'm sure you can help them in in in, in many different ways as visit flanders but on the other side of the spectrum you might have events that are not really um you know thinking about circularity but maybe want to i guess kind of bring some circularity or input some circularity into the event by, by coming to flanders how do you work with those two spectrums you know how do you uh, work with them and how do you make the best of, of, I guess, those both worlds, those kind of extreme worlds? Right. So I basically want to step back to our vision and our uh, strategy. Um, we cannot deny that uh, the current tourism models that we know, that we see, it's under pressure. Um, climate change is something that's happening all around us. It's it's happening in real life. Um, there's a digitization, there's a revolution of AI. There is health crises, there's economic crises, and there's this thing called over-tourism um, that many destinations are starting to struggle with. So as a government organization, we found it very important to find a model where we can really find a balance between residents of Flanders, people who live in Flanders, versus visitors to Flanders, versus entrepreneurs that are active in Flanders. Our ideal is to find a perfect balance between those. Um, we believe in the positive power of tourism. We want people to come over um, and add value to our destination with social return. But in return, we also want to add value to the organizations that come here or to the visitors that come here. So, And this is what translates into our vision of only attracting associations that have a link with uh, Flanders. Now, I already said that uh, circularity is a domain, uh, one of 11 that we focus on. Others are culture, arts, heritage, um, smart energy, industry 4.0, industry 5.0, uh, innovative technologies, cycling. 
So those are the ones that we uh, focus on. When it comes to um, incorporating sustainability into events, of course, we believe in that. Uh, many destination marketing organizations, uh, colleagues of mine, also believe in that. And I highly recommend incorporating the EIC standards. Uh, this is what we try to do with venues, with accommodations in our destination. We want to really set a global standard for sustainability, but that is separate from trying to attract conferences that relate to um, our key industries. I wanted to also touch on a couple of other things that I know you've done. You've created a book, an ebook on circular economy. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that? How did that come about and, and who is that for? Yes. So we have actually created ebooks in each of our key domains. Um, and we want to really uh, show our knowledge and expertise uh, in our region. We just don't want to proclaim it and claim it as ours, but no, we have these ebooks to really show um, on paper why we have it and why it is there. And uh, we really, in those ebooks, we have interviews with experts such as uh, Carl here, uh, but also other people. Um, organizations, associations that are active in the field of circular economy. In Flanders, um, I'm also thinking about universities. We have interviews with leading experts. And of course, um, we give some inspiration on venues, accommodation, uh, cities. So truly those eBooks are a tool for um, associations that are active in that domain to really find inspiration. Um, we have ebooks in circular economy field. We have ebooks in arts and heritage. We have them in sustainability. We have them in innovative industries. Uh, we have them in cycling. We have them in healthcare. Um, it is endless. If people are interested, um, please go to our website, uh, meetinflanders.com. Um, they are free for download. And um, honestly, they are free. Um, they are not a promotional tool, but they are truly in-depth knowledge gathering for um, experts that are active in each of these fields. Absolutely. And we appreciate that. And we'll put the link to that in the show notes, of course. Um, also wanted to touch on legacy makers. This is also something that you're working with at Visit Flanders. Could you explain what that is and, and how that works? Sure. Um, well, legacy, it's um, the word speaks for itself, I think, um, but it really relates again to our strategy. We want to create a long lasting impact in the destination. So legacy is truly a part of that. Um, maybe I can best explain with an example. Um, for instance, there was um, an international cycling conference coming to Ghent next year in June. <clears throat> So um, for a legacy project, we sat together with local stakeholders, being the police, local schools, um, the tourism board. And together with us, we looked at actions we can do um, in preparation for the conference. Um, what can we do to create more safety on the roads in Ghent? So this is really a very concrete um, project that we can um, really see the impact uh, for locals and tourists, when they cycle in Ghent, they can feel safe and at ease at the same time. So this positive impact, this legacy, thanks to this conference, will be felt by locals, but also tourists alike. So this is just one example from, yeah, I mean, hopefully tens, dozens of uh, legacy projects we'll be working on in the future. I love that. I think that's a really, really great example. I, I wanted to come back to, to Carl. Um, and, and in terms of, we talked a little bit about some of the events that you work with. Um, what kind of criteria? I mean, I imagine you get requests or you get connections and partnerships and all sorts of things all the time around circular economy. How do you deal with that? You know, how do you do you have a sort of certain criteria that you want people to uh, have already or a certain mindset or a certain process? How do you deal with requests for people that want to jump into the circular economy, they want to make their events more sustainable through circular economy processes. Tell me a little bit about how you think about that. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, one of the important criteria is that conferences need to be forward looking. Yeah, they need to think about true solutions and about implementation, uh, about results that uh, really can be shown that really are there in practice. Um, the idea of circular economy is already uh, going around for, yeah, let's say, about 10 years. And so we think that we are now past the stage where we need to discuss what it means. Yeah? We need to make sure that it happens. 
And those are things that are uh, very important. So if, if you develop a conference around this theme, we need to make sure that we involve the industry, that we make sure that we can show people that are really bringing new products or new services to the market. And uh, I also feel that there's um, a need to discuss the challenges that are ahead of us in this field. And one of the important challenges here is digitalization. How do we make sure that we apply all the novel IT technologies into this domain? I've, I've talked about material tracking, which will be of major importance, um, but also making sure that yeah, consumers get the right information about their product, um, that there's a possibility yeah, to interact, for instance, with, with financiers, with insurance makers also there, digital tools can be of a very big importance. And typically, if you think about a certain business model, you will need an app or a digital application. Think about leasing a car or using a shared car service. It's not so much the quality of the car which matters, it's the quality of the app, uh, which is uh, of main importance. So digitalization and circularity, a very important field where we still need to develop a lot of things. Another element there, uh, that can be mentioned is, for instance, um, I'll do that again. Another element that can be mentioned there is, for instance, the impact of pollutants. Yeah, when you start recycling material, when you start reusing material, we need to be careful about the presence of, for instance, persistent chemicals. This is a topic that's really coming to the forefront. Uh, how will we deal with that within circular economy? So I think in those conferences, it's on one hand to show what's already happening, implementation. On the other hand, think about those challenges that lie ahead of us where digitalization and health effects, chemical pollution are two of the important things that I can see uh, ahead of me there. Thank you for sharing that, Carl. I think that's that's really fascinating. Back to you, Bert. I know that you're quite selective about the events that you travel to as an organization. And I think that's part of your strategy, right? Could you take a little, a little bit through that? Because I think that's that's quite unique. You're not just uh, you know talking the talk, you're actually walking the walk. Um, could you explain that for us? Yeah, um, so, I mean, as it is, many of the industry organizations that we know um, still kind of cling to the old business model of more and more heads and beds, uh, which is fine, which is the economic uh, driver obviously. Um, but as I explained already, we want to kind of step away from that a little bit. Um, we are a purely knowledge and research driven organization. So uh, exhibiting, for instance, at big trade shows is no longer truly um, the tool that's going to help us uh, reach our goals. Um, what we, what helps us is truly, um, yeah, the research that we do. Um, and that's, and that's how we basically attain our success. Um, I hope um, that many organizations in the future will also rethink their strategies. I think the future of tourism um, is important um, to, you know, to use an MPI line. I think uh, it says when the world meets, magic happens or something like that. And I truly believe in that. Um, but I hope we become all a little bit more selective and um, yeah, make it make sense and have the legacy aspect truly part of uh, every event. Um, try to make an impact anywhere you go in a positive way. Great, thank you for that. So Brecht, we want to kind of wrap up, but ask you uh, for your advice. Um, obviously uh, it would probably involve connecting with Visit Flanders, but what is your advice to meeting professionals that are looking to explore circular economy um, explore circularity, understand better how they can impact their businesses and impact their meetings. Um, what's your advice to them or where should they start? Uh, well, you already mentioned it. So people are welcome to um, contact me directly or one of my colleagues in head office. Um, if you have a conference that related that relates to circularity, um, we are here to help. So um, I'm based in the United States, but I have, of course, colleagues around the world. And in head office, we have dedicated experts to each of the fields we are active in. So if you have um, a conference um, within circularity, um, I can connect you with my colleague in head office um, that can do all the linking, all the connecting uh, to make sure that uh, the conference becomes a success. And um, when an association is interested, we can also help with a legacy track. Um, 
We believe that associations can play a more crucial role in society and their conference or event can be a very powerful tool uh, to create a positive impact. And Visit Flanders is there um, to help with that. Great to hear. Carl, same question to you, uh, but more, I guess, from your from your scientific perspective. Um, anyone who's looking to start the circularity journey, either on their business or on their events, where would you suggest that they start uh, and how could you point them in the right direction? Yeah, so I think they can easily find information about circularity in Flanders and all the expertise that we have either uh, through VITO, so my research institute, but also through Circular Flounders, which is a specific government initiative that brings together all stakeholders around circular economy in Flounders. So Circular Flounders really knows where to go. They know the right expert also for the subtopics within the circular economy uh, team. So uh, they can also easily be found on the internet and they provide a lot of information also on what has already happened, the expertise that we've built up. Uh, and there's a very long list there also of doers in Flanders, people that do the job, people that are working on the implementation and that can also be visited and that can be looked at, uh, that can be, it can be shown to possible participants. So I think, yeah, two uh, addresses to go to. It's either Vito or Circular Flanders. Okay, some great resources there. Thanks for that. So um, thank you both for, for being with us today. I think we've learned quite a bit about how the circular economy connects and how we can use circularity in our events. Uh, Brecht, want to give you the honor of, of selecting someone who you think may be um, a great guest, a great future guest for the Skiff Beatings podcast. Um, well, in the line of what we talked about, actually, I'm thinking um, United Nations Secretary General Gutierrez um, might be a little difficult, but why not try it? And if that doesn't work, I would recommend somebody of um, the Events Industry Council, uh, Sustainability and Impact Committee. I think uh, those people are working hard um, to put out global standards for sustainability and um, why not give them the floor? Sounds good. I'll, I'll try my Portuguese connection with, with Antonio Guterres, see if that works. If that doesn't work, then we'll fall back on the Events Industry Council. Brecht, uh, Carl, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for being with us today on the Skift Meetings podcast. I hope everybody listening enjoyed the conversation as much as I did. And I hope you uh, learned a little bit about circularity, the circular economy, and how destinations can help you with your circularity and sustainability journeys. Uh, for everybody listening, uh, Thank you for joining us and all the best.